My name is Laura Whitcomb. I'm an art historian and curator. And today I'm at Beyond Baroque here in Venice, California, which is hosting the exhibition Paulina Peavy, a Therian Channeler. It is the first show of the artist in 75 years, and it is very special in view of our current moment, which is in the aftermath of the successful Guggenheim Hilma Af Klint show and the recent Agnes Pelton show at the Palm Springs Museum has drawn a lot of interest in female channelers. Paulina Peavy is significantly different in that she channeled a discarnate entity that identified as an astroculture being, meaning a UFO. The entrance of the exhibition introduces the visitor to her cartographic works. These are works that are later, but they signify her explorations, portraying portals into other worlds. Paulina Peavy was worked as a cartographer and a draftsman in New York City, and she learned many skills with letraset and other means, which amalgamate many of her artistic practices into works that present how to transgress space-time. And they also include magical writing, numerology, bringing into an expression that is seen in occult traditions. The reason we have included Paulina Peavy's cartographic works on paper next to an ephemera case allows us to really further explore her cosmology. Paulina Peavy's cosmology believed that there was reincarnating cycles of 12,000 years. And within those 12,000 year cycles, four 3,000 year cycles depicted vastly different stages for humankind. The last stage of this 3,000 year cycle was considered the hermaphrodite age, when both sexes would come together reflecting the tradition of alchemy, which sees the rebos as the female and male entities merging into one system. Here is an ephemera case of manuscripts and books that reflect the early esoteric movements that were very active in Southern California. Many of these books reflect and echo the ideas of Paulina Peavy's cosmology of both a hermaphroditic future and the incremental stages of a 12,000 year cycle. One work that directly reflects Paulina's cosmology is Ospe, which was a spiritualist work that was dictated in the 19th century. It also concurs her ideas of 3,000 year cycles. And also we have a work of Rudolf Steiner, who wrote of the ancient Atlantis and Lemuria, which also concurs the idea of a futuristic race and a fusion of the sexes. Many of the artists that were part of the William Levington Comfort Circle, which regularly met in Highland Park, namely Agnes Pelton, Dane Rudyard, the composer, and Mabel Alvarez, who was a contemporary of Paulina Peavy, were just one example of the very productive and vibrant esoteric scene that was happening in Southern California. In this bookcase, we give a backstory of the spiritualist movement beginning with Mesmer and his protege Puiseguer, who had established the exploration of magnetic forces which evolved into the contemporary understanding of hypnotism, which laid the groundwork of the spiritualist movement. In this display case, we have some very rare books that came from the astroculture historian and experiencer Doris Levesque, who is also known as Tesca. And one of these books, which is very rare, is a hand-pressed book about the occult put together by Manly P. Hall. We also have works by Annie Besant. The last ephemera case that we were discussing was based on many of the esoteric and occult communities that 
Paulina Peavy was connected to through her community. In this case, we have many of the astroculture periodicals along with Paulina Peavy's own diary accounting for her the story of my life with the UFO, which accounts for her long productive relationship with Lacomo that lasted over 50 years. Lacomo was the UFO entity who had guided her to create her work and over a period of 50 years to incrementally add symbols and new meanings to prepare the public for a great vast change that she believed was on the horizon. In this case, we have some rare proceedings of George Van Tassel, who established the Integratron in the Joshua Tree, which became an important astroculture hub. We also have publications of George Adamski, who was in Laguna Beach, also when Paulina Peavy lived in the South Bay, and undoubtedly she would have been familiar with his radio show and many of his astroculture-related lectures. One important dynamic of this exhibition is that we explore the particular convergence of the hermetic and occult communities that evolved into astroculture philosophies in the 1940s and 1950s. Paulina Peavy claimed that she had had her first experience in the 30s and later she claimed it was in 1942. She also would become a well-known astro culture personality and was accounted for um, in some of these books that are on display but also she was featured on the Long John Neville show which featured the masks that she would wear when she channeled her entity Lacamo. Some of the publications that are in the case represent what became the phenomenon at Mount Shasta. One of these books is called A Dweller on Two Planets, and it was one of the first channeled works that explored going back in time and warning humanity of the dire consequences of technological advance. The Mount Shasta dynamic was key to a man named Guy Ballard who had written the I Am Decree and this became the I Am movement that Agnes Pelton was involved with. It is also important to mention that Doris Levesque, whose book collection we are displaying here, had been an experiencer at Mount Shasta before moving to the Joshua Tree where she established the White Star Library. On display in this case is a simograph, and simographs were very important to PV in that she undoubtedly had read Edith Somerville's A Rhythmic Approach to Mathematics, which saw geometric forms as a way to convey universal principles and language. This is definitely an important underpinning to PV, who, as a former draftsman, had engaged the simograph as a key dynamic of her work. So here in the bookstore, we've set up some cases to further expand the interest of Paulina Peavy, whose trajectory of talent is undoubtable in that she wrote manuscripts and books and had didactic means of teaching, which became a publication. And we also include some of her early works that have inflections of surrealism and the uncannity when she was at school at Oregon State. We also have some other early examples of her work along with astroculture publications. theater here at Beyond Baroque, we are showing the films of Paulina Peavy. Many of these films were made in the late 80s and they were premiered at some of the independent cinematic guilds. The film gave Peavy the opportunity to amalgamate so many of her talents, but most importantly, it allowed her to articulate her complex cosmology. And in her films, she created many works, often putting them in rotation, that were 
created for the films and it's where you can see her adept skills and collage but also her performative capacity that allowed her to become the astroculture figure that she ultimately became. On display here is the poetry that was automatically channeled by Paulina. And this is one example where she draws very direct currency with the Surrealist movement. Here on the stairs is a wonderful opportunity to explore the years of the 1940s when Paulina Peavy arrived in New York at the same time the Surrealist emigres were arriving to the city, escaping the war. It is interesting to note that PV lived very close to the Julian Levy Gallery and also undoubtedly saw many of the shows by Marcel Duchamp, uh, the Mile of String show for the Surrealist Exposition, and um, the Peggy Guggenheim show where string and ontological connections between string was a prominent display. Her engagement with Surrealism may be viewed in this section, exploring the biomorphic, exploring the dismembered aspects that were often part of the Surrealist language. You can see connective tissue to the approaches of André Masson, Max Ernst, and even Salvador Dali, who she was often compared to at the time. These works were created later in the 70s and 80s, but they do reflect her burgeoning time in New York when she arrived. Peavy's cosmology disavowed the lowly denominator of war, which she believed was the outcome of the Winter Age, the last 3,000 year epoch before the Spring Age where the one gender race would arrive. Peavy highlighted that this age had gone before in Egypt and the pharaoh, described as androgynous by Peavy, was enlisted as an archetype of the highest state of evolution and reincarnation. This supreme pharaonic state symbolized a human manifestation of the UFO, which was a living being and its ovoid shape symbolized the egg before conception as a timeless construct of the evolutionary cycles of existence. Many of her works highlight what she called the cell of creation and the fetal states of the great miracle. In this room, some of the earliest works of Paulina PV are on display. It is important to understand that PV, guided by Lacamo, was instructed to incrementally paint over a period of 50 years. These first layers may be seen on the wall, which is presented in a pyramidal shape, that illustrate the layers that she had applied over time, eventually preparing the viewer to become a receiver themselves at a future point in time. The work that is shown here was included in the Golden Gate International Exposition of 1939 and then was brought to New York where it was also shown. It is also important to understand that Paulina Peavy, when she channeled Lacamo would create elaborate masks each time representing a different aspect of humanity. This displayed many of her skills and craftsmanship learned when she studied fashion design and was an instructor in Los Angeles. She was invited to participate on the Long John Nebel Show, a popular late night radio show in America which also featured many astroculture celebrities. At that time, she displayed and modeled her masks and stood in front of some of her large oils. One of the works on the wall is an oil that features the only known UFO in Paulina PV's oeuvre. This is also followed by other oil works that feature the layers that present her spirit beings entering interdimensional space. And a final layer that was applied by PV in the 1980s 
guided by Lacamo were the crystals. The crystals echo the ideas of the ancient Lemurians who had encoded their wisdom into the crystal symbol. 